In this video, I'll be describing my elaborate anti-aging, skin care, and supplement routine. I'm Dr. Rawat, a physician who coaches on the reversal of metabolic disease on healthgroupcoaching.com. For reference, I'm 46 years old. Firstly, I'd like you to appreciate that your lifestyle and nutrition has a bigger impact on your appearance and aging than your skin routine. And certainly, since I've lost weight and become healthier over the last few years, about three years ago, I was about 26 pounds heavier than I am right now. I looked older at the age of 43 than I look at the age of 46. And I get these kinds of comments nearly every day from clients, friends, and family. And I would say that the biggest contributor to that has been my lifestyle and diet. And although I'm sure you'll be very interested in my skincare routine, please do watch my other videos on lifestyle and diet as well, because that'll have a bigger impact. Secondly, there is no denying that genetics also plays a major role in your appearance and how quickly you age. And I do admit that I have been blessed with good genetics in that sense. My parents do not look their age and they have never used any of the supplements or creams that I'm, I'll be describing, saying that they do have a very healthy lifestyle. Equally, I don't think there is any shame in being vain and wanting to look as healthy and as youthful as possible. And I do have quite an elaborate anti-aging regime. I have described this on my blog and the Amazon links to all these products are also on the blog, which I'll be leaving in the description of this video. I will make a quick comment about the infrared and near infrared devices that I'm using for my face, the red light face mask, as well as the red light cap that I use for preservation of hair. I don't feel that I have a particular problem with wrinkles or with hair loss. However, there is a lot of good evidence showing the benefits of red light therapy, not just to boost your collagen and stimulate hair growth, but also generally for health. Infrared rays and near infrared rays have been shown to improve the function of the mitochondria, to energize your cells at a cellular level, and even have a beneficial impact on your mood and cognitive function. So one reason that I have invested in a red light face mask as well as a red light hat is not just for the cosmetic benefits, but I feel confident that over time, health benefits, cognitive benefits, possibly even memory benefits of these will become evident. And I don't want to wait until it's too late. The clock is ticking. And for that reason, I decided to invest in those things earlier rather than later. So the first thing I do is I take some oral supplements. And notably, I take collagen powder and I take hyaluronic acid. Collagen powder is not heat labile. So you can mix it with your coffee or your tea. So I mix it with my coffee, black coffee. The first thing I usually have is a smoothie. So I've made several videos on my YouTube channel showing how I make my smoothie. Often it contains soya milk, kefir or yogurt. In, today it was cottage cheese, in fact, with berries or some kind of fruit. Nuts, often cashews, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, five grams of creatine and plant protein, usually 30, 35 grams of that. And with that smoothie, I will have my multivitamin, omega-3 and hyaluronic acid with vitamin C. So vitamin C with hyaluronic acid, this one here is part of my morning routine. And then as I go off to work and I fill my thermos with coffee, that contains a scoop of collagen as well. So that's, you could say, part one of my skin routine because collagen has good evidence for soft tissues like ligaments, tendons, bones. But the best evidence it has is for preventing wrinkles and for the skin. And hyaluronic acid, similar. It has good evidence for the synovial fluid within your joints, so for arthritis, for degenerative disc disease. But the best evidence it has is for the skin. And for both of them, 
It's also true that both of these things are actually used a lot within skin routines. So you'll often find collagen peptides within creams and you'll find hyaluronic acid within a lot of creams. Uh, but to be fair, the scientific evidence for the oral collagen and hyaluronic acid is far superior to the evidence for the creams because uh, particularly for collagen, the, the molecule is rather, rather big and doesn't really penetrate into the skin. Of course, you can turn it into peptides and uh, little uh, parts which you hope will come together and create collagen. Same with hyaluronic acid. For the most part in the skin, it works like a humectant, which means something which will pull in moisture and make your skin look more plump. But that is more of a short-term kind of effect. It doesn't have a very long-term effect. Longer-term effect evidence is with oral hyaluronic acid. And so I make sure I get my oral co collagen, my oral hyaluronic acid. And the way I think about it is that even if the scientific evidence isn't, you know, it, it, it's not a home run, but there are so many multiple benefits, also benefits for your bones and your joints. And I feel that it's going to have benefit if not this way, then the other way. So I think it's definitely worthwhile. Those of you who have been on the program for a while know that I don't like the use of long-term mammalian proteins. So anything coming from a cow, goat, lamb, or pig, I'm not in favor of. I feel those are inflammatory in the long term. And therefore, you'll see the collagen I recommend um, isn't the standard collagen you'll get from Costco. This is the marine-based collagen. Even there, this is a scale-based rather than a skin-based collagen, which has got better bioavailability. And if you look at the details of this particular collagen, it's got the lowest Dalton size. So often the collagen can be any, anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 Daltons. You can go ahead and click on it, Amazon link. And this one has got a really low Dalton size on it, which is good because it means it's going to have better uh, bioavailability. It's going to get in better. Um, and so that's that's why I like it. Also contains hydroxyproline up to 11%, which is something which will increase the production of hyaluronic acid. And so it's kind of a good tag team. And the same applies to the the hyaluronic acid. The hyaluronic acid contains vitamin C, and we know that vitamin C is something which is essential for the production of collagen. It's an essential cofactor. And again, you can see that on my program, I tend to not recommend any mammalian products. So this is a vegan formula and contains vitamin C, which is also essential for uh, production of collagen. So it's a good tag team. They kind of work together, these two. That's step one of my anti-aging skin routine. My next part of my anti-aging skin routine is double sunscreen application. Now it sounds a bit crazy, but let me explain to you. When you have an anti-aging skin routine, one is stopping wrinkles and wrinkles 90% of wrinkles are due to sun damage. But there's another part to it as well. There is also the part which is to stop hyperpigmentation, um, conditions like melasma and also sunspots and age spots. So these are two distinct things which happen with aging skin. One is that you start, you know, because of reduction, the amount of collagen and also elastin, which is another protein within our skin, which happens naturally as we age. You know, once you get past age 27 to 30, you start losing collagen and hyaluronic acid. It's about 1% per year. So you're losing that uh, regularly in your skin. And not, not only does your skin become more dried up and wrinkly, uh, the pigmentation gets, spreads out and gets clumped together. That's why you get those dark age spots. And so if you want to avoid not just wrinkling, but also you want to avoid age spots and you want to avoid conditions like melasma, uh, you need to really cover yourself for not just ultraviolet light A and B, but also blue light, visible light, other forms of light. And so uh, what you do with a double application of sunscreen, so using an anti-aging chemical sunscreen at the bottom and then using a tinted mineral sunscreen on top, you uh, essentially cover UVA, UVB, blue light, and visible light, all of them. And then that way you're covering yourself for not just wrinkles, but also against uh, melasma and also against hyperpigmentation and irregular pigmentation in the form of age spots. So so my top three chemical sunscreens are this one by Eucerin. I like this one because it also contains all of these five antioxidants along with hyaluronic acid. So, and it's not expensive at all. You can see $25. Um, so that's a nice one. Um, apart from that, I also like this Vichy one because it contains collagen peptides. Although, to be fair, 
the Vishu one is, um, oh, and you can see you got some uh, Black Friday sales going on. Look, 25% off on this one right now. Uh, this is one, this one, you know, Vishu is owned by, uh, I believe, L'Oreal, which also owns La Roche Posay. So these are very similar in texture, very thin, watery kind of sunscreens, while the Eusterven is more thick and more creamy. It, it, it feels a bit better, to be fair, the Eusterven. But this one has one benefit. It does have a higher SPF, SPF 60. It does have the collagen peptides as well. And a nice, basic, um, you know, good, reasonably priced uh, sunscreen is CeraV, which also contains ceramides, which are essentially fats, um, also contains vitamin B3 niacinamide and contains hyaluronic acid. So this is a nice, cheap sunscreen as well, the CeraV. In fact, I believe this is the one my children use. <laughs> uh, you can see this one's 25% off as well on Black Friday. All right, so these are my top three chemical sunscreens, which I would apply at the bottom. But then on top of that, I would use a tinted mineral sunscreen because that would have iron oxide. They would also have combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Those three are Elta MD. The reason I like Elta MD is because most sunscreens which are tinted tend to have this problem with this white cast, which uh, appears on the face. But but Elta MD has no white cast at all. It's very easy to smear in. It mixes in really well. Also contains things like quercetin, which is an anti-inflammatory and other kinds of antioxidants. That's a nice formulation. Uh, dermatology is actually a very similar formulation to Elta MD, but it is slightly cheaper. So that one's about $60 or so. This is about $46. Uh, similar kind of formulation for both of them. Contains hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, niacinamide. So nice anti-aging kinds of uh, products and I generally like Eucerin. I just like the texture of Eucerin. So that was level number two. First was my oral supplements, which is my collagen and hyaluronic acid. And level two is my sunscreens, uh, two sunscreens, a uh, chemical sunscreen at the bottom and a tinted mineral sunscreen at the top. The third level step is retinol application. Retinol has got the best evidence for uh, collagen production on your skin for stimulating collagen production but it has to be applied at night because retinol can make your skin photosensitive so this is something you apply at, at night time so typically i will have a shower at night and i'll apply this afterwards retinol can be irritating for the skin and so one thing you may want to consider is not apply it every night apply it maybe a few times a week to start off with and then start increasing I apply it every night because my skin is quite tolerant to it now. But initially, I did get quite a lot of flaking, redness, dryness of the skin. And some people have to use do something like a sandwich technique. In fact, I do that even now. Um, I use a Cetaphil moisturizer and then I use a retinol and then I use a moisturizer again. So I sandwich the retinol between two moisturizers at night because otherwise it does make the skin rather flaky. But that is how retinol works. You know, retinol basically works by irritating the skin. I mean, just like you have chemical peels and you have, you know, um, other kinds of dermabrasion or, you know, when you poke little dots into your skin, these are all techniques designed to irritate your skin. And that's how you, you then produce new skin. And so um, retinol does the same thing. I like Paula's Choice. It's a it's a good product because it also contains collagen peptides, which I quite appreciate. Um, along with licorice, vitamin C. The other one I really like is Marcel. This is actually really nice and very well affordable product. Only about twenty five dollars, thirteen percent off right now. But it contains uh, retinol along with bakuchiol, which is considered to be like a plant retinol, which is also very effective. Some people who can't use retinol, they use bakuchiol instead, and this. In fact, contains both retinol as well as bakuchiol. It's quite interesting. And then the third thing it contains is a PHA, which is polyhydroxic acid, which is uh, mandelic acid in this case, which is a mild uh, daily use exfoliant. So if you think about the um, the other kinds of hydroxy acids, such as glycolic acid, salicylic acid, lactic acid, those are exfoliants which you don't want to really use every day because that can be excessive exfoliation or peeling off the top layer of your skin but because mandelic acid is a, is actually the mildest exfoliant this is something you can use every day and i can tell you whenever i use this my friends t straight away tell me that wow your skin is glowing and they ask me how it's glowing so much the exfoliant in this is actually really effective 
Um, again, with any exfoliant, um, if it is too much for you, you may have to just start by a few times a week and then increase it slowly. Three things so far. First was oral collagen and hyaluronic acid. Second was sunscreens, two types, chemical sunscreen followed by a mineral tinted sunscreen. Level three is a retinol to be applied at night. Level four is really good moisturizer and my top three moisturizers are CeraVe, Cetaphil and Aveeno. And uh, simply because, uh, you know, you just have to drink plenty of water and you need to make sure you have lots of moisturizer. The Cetaphil that I use, um, it contains uh, niacinamide as well, which is a nice extra bonus. CeraVe just has so many good products for moisturizing and depending on your skin type, you can choose the type you want. And same with Aveeno, it's oatmeal based, so it doesn't have, uh, you know, paraffin based kinds of ingredients. So those people who are sensitive to parabens and other kinds of um, paraffin based uh, ingredients would, would appreciate Aveeno. And the last thing was red light devices. So the the evidence for red light devices is actually now quite strong. There are more than 40 studies now which have been published and show that red light is actually really effective in stimulating the production of collagen. So, uh, you know, these things do seem expensive to start off with, but, uh, you know, something like this one here, which is actually the only medical grade uh, red light and infrared mask uh, authorized by both Health Canada, Health Canada as well as FDA. You can go on their website, check out their, their research and their and their studies. But the, the evidence is really strong for uh, the effectiveness of red light therapy. You can see all these pictures they have on their website um, for anti-aging effects of red light. And the other thing would be uh, something like the eye restore. Again, it is more expensive. If you go on their website, you'll see a lot of um, the, the scientific evidence for hair growth. Uh, and, you know, anyone who is wants to hang on to the hair these are actually really um, effective devices not for the most severe cases who need hair transplant but you know for mild to moderate cases these are really quite effective so that is my routine now what things do i not use but which other people may want to use uh, if they have those specific things so if you have hair loss for example particularly then minoxidil is is obviously the the industry leader uh rogaine for for hair loss and then uh you know, rosemary oil has actually been shown to be about as effective as half strength minoxidil, uh, which is the 2.5%. But the minoxidil you would buy if you were to buy would be the 5%. And, you know, you can even get these biotin shampoos and conditioners, which you may want to consider. Biotin, you might be wondering about. The evidence for biotin as an oral supplement is actually quite poor. And uh, we know that it also interferes with blood tests like thyroid function results. So I, I, I'm not a proponent of oral biotin. I just say take a good multivitamin that'll give you magnesium, zinc, biotin, everything, iron, everything you need. So there's no good evidence for for top for oral supplementation with, with biotin. For ladies who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, perimenopause, and menopause, something like a soy isoflanone, which is a plant derived phytoestrogen, which the estrogenic uh, properties could be beneficial. Uh, so something like isoflanone, but you can also get soy isoflanones through just so, uh, con ingestion of soybeans, tofu, tempeh, soy milk, and edamame. And ladies who have gone through the menopause, um, they can also consider estrogen, which has been um, shown to help with multiple things, including symptoms of menopause, but also uh, slowing down of bone, um, bone loss and all that kind of stuff. So you can, those are things to be considered in those particular situations. I hope you found this video useful. If you feel anyone will benefit from this video, then please do share it with them. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to watch more videos of this type, then click on those and I'll see you there.